what's kind of like your your quick pitch to someone who isn't familiar with comics and this is kind of their new experience to it? Um, okay, so I describe Shade the Changing Girl as um, it's uh, it's an alien who looks like a bird who um, possesses the body of a teenage girl who turns out to have been the biggest bully in her school and her friends may or may not have tried to kill her because she's so horrible. And now this alien has to deal with the consequences and the fallout of this bully's life and her superpower is madness. So everything is going crazy. Talk about, I guess, what we have to look forward to in the next story arc. You have to remember that Loma, who's the bird alien, she is not a teenager. She's like a 20-something, you know, medin woman. And um, so uh, at some point, she's like, wait, what am I doing here in high school? And so she kind of hits the road uh, to go try to see the things that she wanted to see in on Earth, you know, like she has a little bucket list of things that she wanted to see, like she wanted to see some dinosaurs. She doesn't really understand that dinosaurs aren't really roaming the planet anymore because she doesn't have like that that knowledge of like history. So she's sort of off trying to go see that kind of stuff. I find it fascinating that you had two scientists as parents. Does that lay a unique foundation for creating a book and a story that kind of defies science, known science. Yeah, you know, it's really interesting because science, because both my parents are scientists, my brother's a science journalist, like I'm the only non-scientist in my, I'm a scientist of the art, yeah. you know? Um, uh, I, You know, science informs a lot of my work, a lot of my world building, like when I'm writing my other YA novels, science fiction and stuff. Um, but I think that actually science feeds into shade um, in, a, in a different kind of way. You know, I mean, there are elements that I'm trying to sort of, I don't want to spoil anything, like sort of put in there, um, you know, like the space program. For example, um, there's an astronaut scene in, I can't remember, I think it's issue three or issue four. And there's a character that's on Mars in an ast in an astronaut suit, and um, it's actually the new spacesuits that NASA is using. So I kind of like pepper in all these other like little things that are in there. But obviously, when you're dealing with a superpower that's madness, that's not scientifically accurate, you know. And meta and like all those things are not accurate. But the show that she's obsessed with, Life with Honey, is based on I Love Lucy, which actually, for real, the broadcast bounced off the atmosphere of the Earth and went into outer space. So it's like, there are like little logical things that I try to put in there, but you know, then it's fiction. Now, you wrote the Princess Leia story yep. um, and Moving Targets, yep. and talk briefly about how you went through that whole process of making that and then coming to the real news story of, of Carrie Fisher passing and how that affected you having been inside Princess Leia's mind yeah. for so long. Yeah, oh gosh, you know, well, I mean, Princess Leia is like a touchstone character for me. I mean, it, you know, when I was growing up, it was like the girl, the girl that I could be. I could, fi I finally saw a princess that I could be, you know, so it meant the world to me. And writing Moving Target was just absolutely an extraordinary honor. And then the fact that she's gone, I mean, it's, it, she was such a advocate for, you know, mental health and, and for just being yourself in the world. And she, just the legacy of her and the way that she moved through the world. I mean, it really is a great, great loss. And I was devastated when she passed. And finally, you have your new graphic novel. Tell a little bit about that. Sure. So Soupy Leaves Home, it's um, it's about a girl in 1932 who um, uh, runs away from an abusive home. And she um, she decides to uh, cut off all her hair, dress up as a boy, and ride the rails as a hobo in uh, the 1930s. And sort of figure, figure her stuff out, figure what her next step is going to be. And she meets an old hobo named Ramshackle who um, sort of sees the world in this sort of magical way. So it's a bit of magical realism with historical fiction and hobos and train hopping.